Hey everyone, this is Erica Johnston and welcome back to my channel. About a month ago, I posted a video on inspiration and motivation when you're going silver. And in it, I was chatting about the fact that we don't see a lot of Hollywood actors and actresses, well, actors we do, <laughs> a lot of men we see with silver hair, but we don't see a lot of women, especially in their 30s and 40s, going gray or showing their gray, even 50s, showing their, their gray in roles. I feel like it would be so amazing if some of these celebrities would take the plunge. I think it would turn the movie industry upside down to actually have a woman growing out her silver hair. <laughs> like, can you just imagine? And so no sooner do I post that video than I discover an actual Hollywood actress, Mandy Mae Cheatham, who is doing exactly that. And it hasn't been easy for her for sure. She's actually documented her, her journey to silver hair through a series of podcasts called Going Grey in Tinseltown. And she is an amazing speaker, an amazing writer. She's hilarious. And I, I highly recommend you check her out just for your own inspirations. She agreed to do an interview with me and uh, she answered every question openly, candidly, and honestly, I, as soon as I called her, I felt like I've known her for years. So it was, it was really fascinating. All right, so without further ado, here's the interview. So when you're growing your hair out now, you've got, it looks like you've got brunette then, is that right? Like you're underneath, you're natural? Color. Yes. It's pretty yeah, dark, it's hey? Quite dark, and it's darker than it was before. Like when you were a little girl? Yeah, like, so there's a streak right here. Yeah that I think is maybe closer to my natural color because sometimes it's a bit more um, auburn-y. So I had, like, I always have had red undertones. Right. Grandma's a redhead and I've got the, like, freckles. Me too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so so it was underneath there, and that's like when I did, I did try to dye my hair blonde once in um, high school. Yes, and it was orange, obviously. Me too. I had like super, you know, I, that was the undertone that came out. My scalp tingled for like two or three weeks after I stopped dyeing it. Really? Yeah. Like one after the decision, so it was like three weeks, and then I made the decision, and then it was just like tingling. Yeah. It was like there was a party happening on my head. <laughs> like, do you think it was all new growth? Like new hairs coming in? Yeah. Because I had the same, I didn't get the tingly sensation, but you know, um, we were talking earlier about hair loss in here and yeah. I had like a significant, especially yeah. right in here, really bad. And yeah, because I think about all the brown dye that we put there and stuff, but it's all come back. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. Hair looks really great today. It looks, I think this is, it's getting there. Yeah. I really do think that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning how to, what to do with it. Cause it really is a whole new thing. And you spend so much time figuring out what skin products to use and what hair products to use and how to like yeah. do this thing that we spend so much of our lives doing. It's not just the time we spent doing it. It's the time we spent learning how to do it. Yeah. You know, and now it's like, wait a minute, what? Now I have short hair. I don't know how to style it. I bought like a million different things to curl my hair, and I ended up buying just a cheap little thirty dollar, like inch and a half barrel curling iron, and that's the thing. Yeah, Where I did rollers and all, like you know, but it's it, in the process. You know, it's you're learning to in learning to groom this thing. You're also learning to love it, right? Yeah. Again, in yeah. different. So Selma Hayek, did you see that post that she did about her hair? No. So she has a lot of strands of gray. Yeah. And she posted an Instagram photo of her, like, I love my gray strands, whatever. Yeah. Um, there's like two or three million Google results when you go to Google, when you Google Selma Hayek gray hair <clears throat> of her in this Instagram post because every news outlet in the world went bananas over yeah. her. Like, I have gray hair. 
Like, yeah, everybody does. I know. You know what? It's crazy because I think people don't think that we all have gray hair or men or I don't know what's going on because, you know, even JLo, she's got like tons of gray hair, tons. I think it's just, it's such a, it's such a difficult, like by the very nature of, of not, of having to grow it out, you know, is like such a commitment to walking through the fire of like watching yourself age uh, one of the guests i had on the podcast katie from katie goes platinum her son is autistic and when she stopped dyeing her hair he said to her he was scared that she was dying wow he was watching her go get old overnight because it was so yep. fast and he didn't like it. Yeah, but you know what though? I think that's just because we equate the silver, we just equate it with old and it's in our psyche and it's in everything that we say too, right? Like we say, oh, when I'm, I, I want to get old and gray with you and, and this and that, but like I was gray at 16. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I look at myself and I don't, I, I don't think that I, I don't look old and I don't feel old. And you don't either, you know? And I think that just having that, the little tips and stuff like that, once they're grown out, it, you don't look older, Mandy. Like, honestly, that's how I really feel. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's kind of weird. Like, I've been getting messages from friends of mine and people, you know, that I was kind of, sometimes it's a person who messages me and I felt a little bit, oh, that person, I'm nervous. Like, I don't know why, you know, some people you just care what they think of you more than others. And the response has been pretty amazing. Like you look younger. You're like Benjamin Buttoning. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? And I think it's like this delight. You know, like when you see, I've always been a young spirit and like cheerleading, you know, I always wear my red lipstick, although today I decided to tone it down a bit. <laughs> and I wore a bow maybe until I was 30, <laughs> you know, yeah. on bows. And, and, and I had this sort of like sad like thing where I was like, oh, I can't wear short skirts anymore and I can't wear bows and like, it's a little inappropriate. What am I doing and why am I not letting myself be a woman? And like, there is a, a, a reckoning. There is a reckoning that's legitimate and that I'm grateful that I had with myself about baby talk and manipulation and playing small and using my little girl stuff to manipulate people. There's a reckoning. Right. And part of that is looking at what, how, how I'm dressing and why and what I'm trying to pull off or, or convince people of or hide, as opposed to dressing for the love of like the bow, you know? And, and when I look at older women in their, you know, golden years, golden years, and they wear bows, and they like dress like little girls, it's thrilling, I love it, because there is this beautiful, exuberant, joie de vivre, like love of life energy that, like Betsy Johnson kind of. Oh, yeah. And I feel like now I have more permission to allow that part of me to exist. And like, I've been wearing a lot of these bandanas, um, you know, cause yeah. it, I don't know how to do my hair. <laughs> so <it> like, <laughs> like hair bands kind of hurt. They give me a headache cause my head's so big. <laughs> <laughs> I like poke, I'm like, you know, um, but the, but the bandanas feel good and they're such bright colors and I love, but then there's like the little, yeah. bow, right. So now I'm, I get to like be my saucy bow girl self again. And it feels uh, like I'm giving myself permission to exist as young as I feel on the inside, on the outside. You know? I'm allowing myself to exist without any sort of limitations around, um, around what other people think of me or around what the expectations of others are. For myself, going gray is hard. Like it's hard for anybody. It's hard for any woman, um, any age, I think. But did you find it's harder for you for getting jobs or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. For the first, like, 
I mean, it's pretty normal for your agents to not answer you when you email them or call them. Like it's right. normal because they're so busy and they just they only talk to you if they are telling you to go to a, an interview or something. But because the entertainment industry loves the stereotype and loves like this, she's the, you know, um, suburban mom and she's the drug addict mom and she's the mom who's a nurse and a single mother. Like, it's like, you can, I could tell you all the categories that show up over and over and over again. And some of it is because we are those categories, you know, and some of it is because people don't think very creatively when it comes to the characters that aren't written based on themselves. <laughs> it's changing a lot in casting where people like don't necessarily go for just the assumption that everyone's going to be Caucasian or, or right. what have you. But the age thing is the, is the last thing to change. So what happens is now the first audition that I got after I started dyeing my hair was for a woman in her seventh. Wow. Yeah. Started not dyeing my hair. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. And it was funny. You know, they're like, we're not sure what the ages are going to be. It's fluid. And that's fine because I'm playing the mother of a woman who's grown. So there's a good like age range in there. 70s is a little high, but they don't know who the, how old the woman is. They're choosing to be anywhere from 25 to 45. So they're, I understand that. But it also speaks to a really big problem that happens in casting. And the same problem that I was talking about earlier with my own ideas of how my life was going to go is that you get to 40 and then suddenly you're in the 40 plus zone. So it's 40 to 80. So you're going into a casting call and you're playing a grandmother because you have gray hair and you could be anywhere from 40 to 80. As long as the hair is gray, it'll play. But why can't, the thing is, is can't they just look at you for who you are and you could just wear a wig or something like that? Like, is that a possibility? Because, I mean, that's really not thinking outside of the box. Like, especially if you're, you, I can see them not wanting if your hair is, you know, half grown out. That makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, honestly, yeah. wear a wig. But, but I think that once your hair, I, I, I can actually see you playing, like, early 20s. When your hair is grown out, I'm not kidding you right now because that's the style and the trend, I could actually see you getting a, a younger role you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting to see how people's individual experiences with aging crop up, you know, and I had a casting director tell me I should take new headshots with wigs on, you know, which is a thing I could do, but then it's like, when you present a headshot, the kind of work that I do, I don't really do commercial work anymore. I used to do a lot of commercials. So in that space, like a lot of it is just, what does she look like? We want this color hair to match the kid who's got this color hair, you know? Okay. So it's really bold for somebody to, it's a bold decision to put a woman in with gray hair who's supposed to be in her early thirties or even early forties, you know? And it's just not a thing that they, maybe want to not a hill they want to die on you know because there's so many people that you have to convince of so many things when you're making the decision to cast somebody like yeah. in a couple, there's the agency there's the casting director there's the uh, production company there's the actual director and they all need to agree and the brand i'm sorry the main one is the brand and they all have totally different ideas and they're trying to find you know so i don't like i don't know and it's such a massive industry and there's so many different types of work. There's that. But all I know is from my experience, like my agents just didn't answer my emails. I just kept sending them new pictures every two or three weeks and being like, here's what I look like now. And they're just like, I'm sure, like, I don't know what to do. I don't, and so they, just, they didn't answer because they never do, but sometimes they do. But when they do, they're like, you know, great, good for you. But I was like, and I started a podcast, I'm doing this whole thing and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, no ants, like no ants. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And then even trying to get people to come on the podcast at first, I would ask other actresses to come on and they'd be like, I'll come on if I don't have to say my age. Wow. Because it's, it's a, it can be a career killer when you hit 40. It's like your auditions drop off. And I used to audition three to five times a week. And I don't, I don't even know. It's been like a couple of months since I've had an audition. No. Wow. So 
it's real and it's really scary. And I, I sort of was facing a whole bunch of decisions when I decided to stop dying. It was like, well, I know that, I know that I'm going to act forever. I know that this is like a decision that I've made because it's who I am and I love the craft of acting and I'm never going to stop studying and never going to stop doing it. Yeah. I can't rely on someone else to give me permission to do that. And the whole industry is based on that. And that's why it's so devastating for people when they feel they have to leave because it's like they've been rejected as a person. Right. And I, I just decided that my ability to do what one of the things that's in my genius level is can't be based on someone else's permission. And that's also, also why I create my own work. Um, but the the dependence on people like being brave enough to cast me is a real thing you know so I've been applying more for indie film and places where they're looking to stand out and be different and um but you know because my agent situation is what it is like I don't know I feel like I would make a real good Marvel comic uh rogue yeah like, you know, some sort of weird superhero or whatever right now. <laughs> um, but it's scary and I just have to have faith. Yeah. You know, yeah. when the hair's finished growing out, I'm still going to be an artist and I'm still going to be making my own work. And Yeah, I know. It's hard. It is scary. Yeah. But you know what? I think just stay true to yourself. And when you're having those like really rough days, know that you are making a difference in the world even think like that like sometimes if you take take the focus off of yourself and think about what you are doing for future women yeah. you really are like you may think you're one person and you know that you're maybe not doing anything but you are you are 100 percent making a huge difference and i think that's knowing that you're helping other people everything else will just fall into place i think i really do believe that that's, I've been having that experience with the podcast because it feels like um, kind of like parenting in a way, like it's sort of like thankless, you know, you do the, you do it and people do send me lovely messages and stuff. So it's not completely thankless, but it, it has a really solid um, listenership, but it's small, small, but mighty, you know, and it's really specific. And I made it really specific for a reason because this is exactly what I want to be talking about. Yeah. And the women who listen, it's helping them through this process. Like so many people message me and they're like, I had to pull over because I was driving and I was starting <laughs> to cry. And like, you know, it's powerful and empowering, but also just honest. And like, I don't have all the answers. Nobody does. But the more we talk about it, the easier it's going to get. And, and so I feel I, I've been taking a break for the past couple of weeks um, in putting up new episodes. I still have five to put up. Um, because I'm focusing on the cheerleading project and I needed to like take a step back and breathe a little bit. But what I realized about it is, is that it's almost like a time capsule. I'm never going to go through this crowd again. Mm -hmm. I really, really wanted to document it. Yeah. The same way I wanted to document my son when he was little, you yeah. know, like when I think back to how I was feeling the first month and I didn't want to go outside and how intense it was like yeah. the first many months and how I am now. And, and when it started to happen that I would go out and forget that I had gray hair. Yep. You know, I know. Yeah. And so now I'm sure pe like now people are, I think like it, I think what's happening now is that people think I did this on purpose. Yeah. LA and everyone's doing weird stuff to their hair and like you know it kind of looks like it could be maybe a dye job you know? <laughs> like you know like a yeah a crop ring. <laughs> <laughs> do you know I, I still I still get people that think that I've dyed my hair this color yeah. it is so funny like it, it kills me and I, I go no no it's it's natural but people they don't like because when you're younger and you yeah. do it, it throws people right off. Nothing's changed for me. Everyone, I still have the exact same conversation every time I meet someone. It's like, it's like, yeah, I have a 26 year old son. What? Aren't you 26? No, look at my hair. And I, <laughs> I 
you like use it as a, as now a way for me to it for me to not you know have that conversation about how young I was when I had my son you know but no yeah yeah all right well should we sign off here and maybe yeah. chat another time <laughs> yeah, I'd love that when next time I'm home we should grab coffee and I'd love that yeah. yes okay well it was really nice to meet you face to face you. And uh, and we'll be chatting. Hey, take care. Thank you. All right. Bye. So I just want to thank Mandy very much for taking the time out of her busy schedule to sit down and have a chat with me. I hope that someday we get to meet in person and uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Share it with your friends and until next week, have a wonderful week. Bye for now. In today's video, I am interviewing beautiful Starlet. Okay. In today's video, I've got an extra special treat. I always say extra special treat for you. That's really stupid. Okay. So we're good. Okay, we're recording. Oh. All right, here we go. Hang on, I'm, I'm taking us to another room because oh. my puppy's going to cook. Oh, I want some. <laughs> He's going to cook us some dinner.